A huge thank you to all the super sponsors who make it possible for me to make these videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon to join the ASCII Brigade. Here's the first real part of the tutorial, where we'll just be laying some groundwork before we put everything together. If you prefer, there's also a text version of this whole guide, which I'll link to in the description. What I've done so far is download the tutorial starter pack, I've unzipped it, and I've opened it up in Slade by using its open directory action, but you can use whatever text editor you feel is appropriate. Clicking around here, you will see we have a few different graphics, a sound, and a definition for that sound in the SND info, and you're welcome to replace any and all of these with your own versions. First of all, our mod needs the player to gather something, so let's start with the most basic element of our mod and build up from there. We're going to need a pickup that the player can collect to award them points. The appearance and name of this can be up to you, uh, but I'm going to follow the lead of Devil May Cry and make them red orbs. I'm going to do this as a decorate item first for people who have already learned decorate. The documentation for that is on the Zed Doom wiki. We want to define a Doom Orb that extends inventory. We're going to give it a high max amount for inventory. We're going to specify its amount as one. Pick up messages picked up an orb. It's going to use the sound we've defined in SND info. We're going to give it the bright flag so that it shows up in the dark. And we are going to give it a small list of states that just toggle back between frames A and B. If you're not familiar with dates and want to know more about them, take a look at the Zed Doom wiki again. It's a shorthand way of tying together the behaviour and sprites of a GZ Doom object, and it's still very useful in the Zed Script world. And translating a simple decorate object like this into Zed Script is not too much of an effort. There's a guide to the differences between decorate and Zed Script on this wiki page, which goes into some detail. In our case, we just need to know a couple of things. First, we're not defining an actor, we are defining a class that happens to be an actor. The second is that all the definitions and properties here go into a block that's called default, instead of just hanging around at the top of the class. And the other thing is that semicolons are used much more consistently in Zed script to mark the end of a line or statement or property. We're also going to need to rename our lump here so that it's picked up correctly as Zed script. And if we toggle back and forward, you'll see that we've now got some nice syntax highlighting. The last thing we need to do is put a version declaration at the top, so that GZ Doom knows which version we're using. At the moment, the latest one is 4.11.3. It has probably changed by the time you're watching this, so do check for the latest one. So that's all it's taken to make our first Zed Script class. It's not very Zed Scripty at the moment, but we'll come to that. So from here, we can run the game, go into GZ Doom start up the familiar first entryway level, and if we type summon Doom Orb in the console by hitting the back tick key, we should be able to summon a few of these, and they'll happily blink away to themselves before we pick them up. You can bring the console down again and say print inv to show the inventory, and you can see them sitting there. If you're not familiar with GZ Doom's ecosystem already, it's worth mentioning that inventory here means something a bit different from in most Doom Engine games. In things like Heretic and Hexen, inventory items are specifically things you can pick up and scroll through and then use later, like the Tomes of Power or the other magic items. In GZ Doom, inventory refers to everything that the player owns, whether it's weapons or ammunition, as well as the usable inventory items or whatever else we are counting as inventory items. So these Doom Orbs won't appear in a scrollable inventory, they're just tokens that get put into here, behind the scenes. So that's a simple decorate style inventory object that we've just ported straight to Zenscript, but now we come to the interesting part where we can use Zenscript to alter its logic in ways that were off limits to us in decorate. We don't want these orbs to hang around forever. If they're not picked up within a certain time, we'll make them eventually vanish. In Decorate, you might do this by trying to construct a limited loop of states by remembering the various rules you had to adhere to with user variables and how to manipulate them in anonymous functions, or if you're like me, you'd just write a ton of these states instead until the sum duration was just about the same as I wanted. Zscript allows us a much more elegant way to do this. We're going to write a tick function for the object. Like I mentioned in the introduction, the tick function is the heart of a Zscript class's logic. Every time the game updates, that is on every tick, this function is going to be called on all the objects so that they can decide what they need to do on this frame. 
The tick function is first defined in the thinker parent class as a virtual function, meaning it's expecting that the child classes define it for themselves. And in the inventory class that inherits from actor and then thinker, the override version of the function handles all the standard stuff like moving the object through its list of states and so on. In our doomorb, we want to declare that we're overriding that function again so that we can do something even more specific. So to declare our tick function, we want to say override void tick. This denotes that for this class we're writing something more specific than its parent tick function. The first thing we want to do here is make sure we're calling the logic in the parent actor class as well so that it moves through its states, so we want to call the super class's tick function. If we miss this out, then the object won't do anything from its parent's tick class. This means the object won't advance through its list of states and will just hover awkwardly in midair. Now we want to give the object a concept of how long it's existed so that we can time its disappearance. Just like in C Sharp or Java, we can add a variable here that each instance of this class can use to keep track of how long it's been around. This one's an integer called age. Then we can add some simple logic to our tick function. Add one to the age instance variable on each tick, and if it's now over 350, remove the object from the game by calling its destroy function. There are 35 ticks per second in the GZ Doom world, so this object should last 10 seconds before disappearing. The keyword self here is used to refer to the object that's running this code, the same way as C Sharp and Java would use this. There's a list of special keywords like this on the Zscript special words page. The destroy function exists for all Zscript objects and marks the object for deletion. It's defined in the object class at the very top of the hierarchy. If you're coming from C++, you may have some concerns just now about us not having initialized the age variable to anything. Zscript doesn't allow you to set initial values for variables like this, but rest assured that an int variable will always be initialized to zero. With the tick function now written, we can open the project in GZ Doom again, summon a Doom Orb, and after waiting for 10 seconds, we'll see the result of our logic as the object vanishes. We have introduced a small problem though. If you summon a lot of these, then pick them up and use print inventory, you'll see them in your inventory as you expect. But if you wait a while and then print inv again, you'll see that they're disappearing from your inventory even though they've been picked up. This might be a good time to introduce the idea of logging in aid to debugging. In Zscript, we can print a message to the console by using the console.printf function. Printf is a very useful function that's available from anywhere. It's like the function of the same name in C, and it works a bit like an easier to parse log function from ACS. You specify a string to log with placeholders for values, followed by the values to go into the string. In this case, we're using %s in our output string to tell printf that it should expect a string to go into that slot, and we're then telling it to replace that %s with the result of self.getClassName which will be Doomorb or whatever you called this class. As always, the available substitutions are listed on the ZDoom wiki. Now if we run the game again and do the same thing, summoning and picking up the Doomorbs, we'll get notifications that the Doomorbs are being destroyed even though they're in our inventory. To prevent this, we'll add a new condition to our tick function that makes the object avoid aging if it's in the inventory of a player. We can detect this by checking if self.owner, which is the equivalent of saying if self.owner is not null. If the object has an owner, then we want to return early, only having performed the superclass's tick function and ignoring all the aging logic. If you test this now, you should see the orbs in your inventory staying around as you'd expect. So now we've got a small but fully functional Zscript class that will disappear a while after being created, unless it's safely in a player's inventory. In the next video, we'll talk about how to use an event handler to get it to drop when monsters are killed. <laughs>